Nakagiri, I will be calling the meeting to order. Are we okay with the recording? <laughs> okay. Reset. Okay, thank you. Uh, please join me in a moment of silent reflection. Thank you. And if you'd please join me by standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Roll call, Madam Natalie. <laughs> well, let me yes. have a few minutes Plank? to get settled here. Here. Commissioner Gross? Here. Commissioner Zajac? Here. Commissioner Drick? Here. Commissioner Hauserman? Here. Commissioner Reeder? Here. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner Griffith? Here. And Commissioner Nakagiri is absent. A quorum is present. Thank you. Okay, we will move. We have no correspondence this evening except the correspondence I think that you have all gotten during the week in connection with the resolution this evening supporting the clerk. Um, we'll then move on to call to the public. And um, okay. I think our call to the public is coming via video. Good evening, everybody. Sorry I can't be there in person. Um, I apologize for that, but had a pre-planned uh, uh, getaway. So, uh, But I did want to chime in. And uh, as you know, I've, I've made it very clear that I do my best to stay in my own lane. Um, however, I'm going to step out just a little bit and say on behalf of the electeds, uh, as well as the department directors and the uh, employees of the county. For the outgoing commissioners, I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, we know that this is a part-time job, uh, that if you do correctly is way more than a full-time job. Um, and if you sat down and put pen to paper, you probably ended up working for like, you know, 30 cents on a dollar or something like that. But uh, in all sincerity, we just want to thank you. We know that the last couple of years has been uh, anything but easy uh, on you uh, or, uh, you know, everybody, quite frankly. It's just been a, a mess these last few years. And uh, we know that you've uh, done the best you could. Um, and for that, we, we appreciate. Uh, Carol Sue Reeder, um, hats off to you. Knew you as a attorney and then, of course, as a judge and then a county commissioner. Um, it's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. Uh, you should be proud of uh, your contributions to the county uh, in all your capacities. Um, Mitch, uh, to the guy that's, uh, you know, I'm, I never claim to be the smartest guy in the room, uh, even when I'm sitting next to somebody that's got an IQ of about 50. Uh, but uh, frankly, I feel pretty dumb when I'm in the room with you. Uh, there's a guy that's got about 27 degrees and uh, way smarter than anybody I know uh, and uh, very humble. Um, and wise, way, 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 way wise beyond your years. Uh, you will be missed, but uh, I'll be voting for you for president one day. So uh, hats off there. Uh, Carol Griffith, wh what can we say? Uh, 14 years uh, on the county board, uh, a staple in the community, uh, a heart that is uh, four times as big as you are. Um, you know, your family's been here forever and ever too. Your, uh, your calmness, uh, although I have seen you fired up a few times, not in public, but uh, if anybody's ever seen her fired up, it's pretty interesting. But uh, anyways, uh, you know, your, your calmness, your sense of um, righteousness, for a lack of better words, doing the right thing, uh, even when maybe it's not the most popular, uh, you know, voting your heart and your constituents' heart, um, you've just been a, a great it's been an honor and a pleasure to work with you for sure. Grace. And then uh, last Grace but uh, certainly not least, um, Brenda, um, it's, it's been an honor and pleasure to work with you as well. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's been an interesting interesting to sit back and watch you uh, grow and uh, grow into that role. And it's unfortunate that uh, we're, you know, we can't keep you around due to redistricting, but um, I, I've, I've seen, personally, I've seen the most growth from you uh, as a board member, and your talents um, were uh, certainly appreciated. 
uh, and will be sorely missed. So uh, at any rate, um, thank you so much for uh, all your service and I look forward to uh, seeing you all uh, maybe at a coffee or something. All right, so beat it. All right, first of all, I apologize for my colleague here. And, and by the way, Mitch, he told me just the other day that I was the smartest guy he'd ever run into. Um, so I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, you know, and I, I was throwing in a few words there. Grace, you guys have done a, a great job. And um, and I know, you know, as, as new uh, county commissioners coming into this, you're, th you're thinking, gosh, did I make the right decision? Um, I should have done this. I should have done that. But, you know, that's not what it's about. It's about doing your best for the employees uh, of, of Livingston County and and you know li the Livingston County infrastructure, and and for that we appreciate it. And you you can't be faulted. You should be proud of all those um, all those decisions and what's gone into making those, um, especially amidst all of the pandemic stuff and people in the audience, uh, you know, yelling and screaming and and. Uh, you know the, the threats online and by phone and and all of that so frankly anybody that want to go through it again and and run they deserve uh they deserve some accolades or or they've got something seriously wrong with them um was i supposed to say something like that um anyways but we think you guys are just uh are, are brave people i did want to mention something um that i thought was so cool and this is why um, nobody messes with commissioner reader is uh, she used to run a trap line as a little girl. And I just find that pretty amazing because um, I know she, uh, uh, she was pretty successful. I tried it and I got my hand once and that's the only thing I caught. And Murphy, uh, he said he used to run a trap line. You caught something? I did catch something. Really? Yeah. Cold. Cold, yeah, that's, that's about right. So, um, but anyway, uh, you guys have been fantastic. Be proud of what you've done. Um, uh, because the employees of Livingston County are appreciative for all of your time, and uh, it's 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 been amazing to see. And and you know, I know Mike and I and our fellow electeds, everybody, we've learned a lot from you. So um, so we appreciate that opportunity to learn from you and uh, put some new tools in our tool belt. And uh, and again, thanks. And did I tell? Uh, yeah, no, now now you're just I, rambling. So get out of the way, or I'll push you down the stairs God. again. That's it. Have a great night, everybody. God bless. Thanks Merry again. Christmas. Take care. Commissioner Griffith, we are not able to hear you on Zoom. Okay, let me move this up. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, as you know, we have two calls to the public, and we're going to start in the room. If you haven't had an opportunity to fill out the card. Uh, and give to Natalie or myself. We'll start there and then we'll move on to um, the Zoom. So Christy Cox, Genoa Township, welcome. Thank you. Push it, push it real hard. Push it. Thank you. Or real soft. So most of you know my pedigree with the county. I've been here forever. My mother was with the board forever. Um, and I've now, hmm, I'm at 30 years as an employee. Um, you guys have done amazing things in unprecedented times. I am in awe of what this board has gone through and how you've handled it in the past couple of years. I've learned from this board a lot about public service, and I thought I knew it all coming into this last term. So I want to thank you, especially the, those of you who are leaving us. I want to thank you as a citizen, as an employee, and as part of this entity we call Livingston County. Thank you all for everything you've done. And thank you, Christy, for all you, you do and your years of service. Thank you. Natalie, do we have anyone else? Brian Junk here from Howell. I would also like to mention that during the thank you video, um, the guests on Zoom were not able to hear, unfortunately. So um, I was asked to mention that. Oh, okay. Let's play the nice parts again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the accolades. <laughs> <laughs> 
Brian, how are you getting along? Pretty good. Um, Still got a good nurse working for you at home? Commissioner uh, Drick's got a nice set of wheels over there. Yeah. Look at this puppy here. I got some, this is all decked out. Get, uh, we're going to have races after the game. In two weeks, yeah, right. I, I can uh, <laughs> Fix you up pretty good, <laughs> hopefully two weeks. Um, no, just a quick thank you again. We said it all there. Um, we learned so much from you. We appreciate, you know, all that you've done. And, um, and you know, I mentioned the county employees, but of course you guys have always weighed what's what's best for your constituents. Um, and, uh, and it's a tough balancing act. So uh, kudos to you and being able to navigate what's an extraordinarily difficult set of choices at times and so just want to say thanks again and and uh, we respect you all and we also I shook down the other electeds and uh, we've got some uh, for our four outgoing um, we've got some gift certificates for you for like uh, uh, what is that Adam Merkel um, uh, diamonds across the street right some other ones so anyways enjoy a dinner out there but we appreciate all you've done for us thank you thank you so much thank you very much thank you thank you thank you all right do we have anyone else natalie from in the room i have no other cards okay thank you we'll now move to zoom if you are on zoom and wish to address the board would you please raise your hand so we can see you and identify yourself by name and location. Um, is that a hand there on iPhone in the far right hand corner or is that just, nope, not now. Okay, doesn't look like we have anyone on Zoom. So I will close the call to the public. We're now gonna move on to minutes. We have minutes um, from, uh, Meeting dated December 12th, 2022. Move the minutes. Support. We have a motion with support. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions uh, to the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor signify aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. We have no tabled items from previous meetings. So now we will go on to uh, approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Motion agenda. Support reader. Discussion. Discussion. Uh, Commissioner Drek. Thank you. Uh, item 11C is a uh, resolution from the courts that is entirety in its entirety occurs in 2023. And I believe that uh, the current board cannot bind a future board in any manner. So I believe that would be ineligible to be on our agenda. So I believe the proper thing to do would be to refer it to the courts committee so that it can be moved through again and considered by the board next year. So that's the first one. The second one would be a similar problem with item 11K, which mostly occurs in 2023 with payment of the money and the calculations. And I believe the same argument holds there that it's uh, ineligible to be on the agenda. And uh, finally, the um, item number, and that would be it. Okay, thank you. Um, I think Matt Norford um, and also Administrator Bird. Um, I don't know if anyone has had time to look into that. Matt, did you hear um, the questions from Commissioner Dreck? I did. There's no legal prohibition to uh, proceeding on these matters. However, it's the board's discretion whether to refer something to a committee or whether to postpone something for later consideration. Thank you. Um, yes, Commissioner. Uh, I think both, both of these resolutions have been already discussed in committee. Um, and so I would, I would feel that we could uh, go ahead um, and approve them uh, this evening. Um, I would hate 
to have to table them or uh, delete them from the agenda and then have to have them go through committee again in January, the duplication of effort. So I think uh, I think it would be appropriate to um, vote on them this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Gross. Any other discussion? Madam Chair, I have a motion second. to amend. I, I didn't get a second for that motion. I think we're still discussing. I just wanted to see if anybody else had any other questions on this particular. Okay. So there is, uh, I'm going to ask for, there's, there was one other comment. Um, was this in It was not related this? to items C and K. Okay. Since there wasn't a motion, I. Okay. So there is a motion for an amendment. Is there support for the amendment? Technically, that's point of order that I've raised. Yeah, it wasn't a matter. And as a point of order, uh, no seconds needed. It's just a vote. Okay, we'll go ahead and vote. Um, I, have, I have something to say if I could, Madam okay. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I wish that uh, what Commissioner Drick says uh, was so. Uh, there would be a lot less uh, scrambling in our state legislature uh, at the last minute because uh, our state legislature and our federal uh, Congress does this all the time. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, uh, as much as I think uh, uh, that what uh, Commissioner Drick says has merit, I think um, I think that we still have the authority to, to do it if we choose to not do it or to, uh, I, I would uh, think that we should uh, decide each one on its merit at the particular time when it's brought up. So I would uh, proceed with that. Okay. Any other discussion on this point of order? Madam Chair. Yes, I, I would just point out, I don't think a point of order calls for a vote. I think you'd have to call the question. There's no question pending. A, a point of order pauses discussion and, and requires the board chair to make a determination. I'm looking for, I had not for Mr. Norford and I'm seeing one. So um, absent a motion to amend, um, that there's no vote to be taken. Okay. Seeing that this is up to the chair, we're going to leave it on the agenda for this evening. I have a motion to amend, Madam Chair. Okay. I'd like to add the resolution uh, that was discussed um, following a discussion of the uh, General Government and Health and Human Services Chair, myself as the FAM Chair, and then discussion that took place in the last um, two weeks ago board meeting for the resolution authorizing negotiations, contracts, and agreements to construct, maintain, serve, and apply for grants the Livingston County Public Safety Educational Municipal Open Access Middle Mile Fiber Optic Trunk Line System from IT, who has long titles. Uh, I would like to amend the agenda to add that as item number L. Is there support for this? Any further discussion on this addition? Um, I, there was preparation for this that, uh, that I because it wasn't on the board that I, uh, because it wasn't on our uh, agenda that I did not do. Uh, Chris Toby uh, was not, we were not able to um, to connect on this. Uh, I will, I, I do not favor adding this to uh, the agenda tonight because um, I think that uh, there are several items that need a, a broader discussion uh, on this on this contract. I will not favor uh, this amendment. <clears throat> Any further discussion on this amendment? Commissioner Gross. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at the last PAM meeting, there was a fair amount of, of discussion on, on this uh, uh, proposed resolution. And I recognizing that there are some questions. Um, I don't feel that they're very serious personally, but my concern is that if we don't act on this this evening, <clears throat> we jeopardize the ability for us to 
uh, apply for an additional source of funding. Um, the state, uh, new state agency is open for business and receiving applications for grants on January 9th. Um, if we don't get off the dime and get our request in there, uh, we could jeopardize our ability to secure additional funding, which would be badly needed. Um, so I, I would be in favor of voting on this tonight. However, if we're not able to do it tonight, then we certainly need to do it next week for sure. Thank right. you. Any further discussion on this? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Dreck. I can't vote on anything that I've read that's this thick. I haven't read. I mean, there are parts that I've, I'm sure I've read, but not everything. So I can't vote on it to, uh, in favor. Okay. So those in favor of amending our agenda to add item L, um, please signify with A. Aye. 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 Those opposed to amending the agenda? Nay. Nay. Okay. It will be added to our agenda. Madam Chair? Yes. I just wanted to make sure that we have the right vote count here. I need six, uh, as this is a late agenda ad, so it requires a two-thirds vote. Okay. I to make sure that we had six, perhaps a roll call or a show of hands for the okay. aye. Okay. For an aye, let's raise our hand. Okay. And those nay, there'll be two. Okay. So we will be adding this onto our agenda this evening. Madam Chair, I have one more amendment just to expedite the, the final voting, if I may. Mm -hmm. Items G, H, and I are all appointments. Um, they were they move smoothly through personnel in my recollection. So I would move that they be considered in mass in one vote. Okay. Support that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Those will be considered in mass. Okay. We'll now have an agenda. So we will now move back to. I think we need to vote on the agenda. I'm sorry. Now we're back to the original agenda. Um, so, all those in favor of the agenda, please signify. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. Motion passes, and we now have an agenda. Reports. Are there any reports uh, from the board this evening? I have a brief one. First of all, I'd like to say that all the muskrats in the county are now safe. Um, I'm not hunting them anymore. And all the attorneys that I left behind when I got off the bench are also safe. <laughs> anyway, um, my report has to do with lets. We've had a lot of uh, conversation about lets over the year. And um, some want to increase the amount that it costs people to use it, and some don't. But I want you to understand what they do, and I found that there's a service that I didn't know that they give. Day before Christmas or thereabouts, there was a fire out on Mason Road. Household burned to the ground. The people got out and the animals got out. And the Let's Bus was there. Now, what was the Let's Bus doing in a fire? They were giving shelter, support, food, water, anything else that was needed to the firefighters. And I think that says a whole lot about that department because I don't see anywhere where we've ever talked about that as being a service. So if you think that it doesn't pay for itself, I think that one fire just did. So I want you to keep that in mind in the new year when you're voting on this type of service. Thanks. Thank you. Any other reports this evening? I, Commissioner Hazelman? I would uh, just want to say thank you to my colleagues that this will be the last time we'll be together. Um, uh, life brings us a lot of situations, and I think this board was a very good board to serve with. Um, I was happy to sit next to uh, 
Judge Reader, Carol Sue Reader, I, you know, uh, and learn from her. Uh, you know, Carol Griffiths has been here a long time, and uh, she often was the last person to speak on an issue. And I always waited to hear what she was going to say. Appreciate that. Uh, Mitch was always the spark plug. Uh, if I could write as well as he did, uh, I'd be very dangerous or very, or dangerous to people that are evil, put it that way. Uh, and uh, Brenda Plank, thank you for your service. You already smile and, and um, uh, your kind heart. It's been appreciated and uh, we'll all miss you. So thank you for your service. Thank you. Commissioner <clears throat> Gross. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, um, I would like to echo uh, Commissioner Haldeman's uh, comment just now. <clears throat> um, the four people leaving this board have been a great addition for the last two years. They brought a variety of experiences from their day jobs, their experience. Uh, previous uh, work experience that has been very helpful. Um, we will miss the four of you. Thank you so much for your service. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. I am uh, the recipient of a lot of knowledge, especially from the four people leaving. And I, I want to thank you very much. Um, I made a, I made a joke uh, the other day that um, it was interesting the dynamics of the board because it was a little bit like that old commercial when E. F. Hutton said something everybody stopped and listened and Carol Sue and Carol uh, you're a lot like E. F. Hutton everybody wanted to hear what you had to say uh, and I thank you for that. Um, I thank you for uh, uh, the, the what I'll call the young, the youngers in the in the group here, uh, in in Brenda and Mitch, because your enthusiasm, your energy. Um, I'm hoping that the young people coming on board can can duplicate that because we need that. We need that forward thinking. We need that perspective. And uh, just want to thank you all very very much. Thank you. Well, just because I have the floor and I didn't plan on having the floor this evening as chair, um, I wanted to, under reports, um, give my gratitude for 14 years on this board, which um, I wanted to share with you some of those accomplishments that happened in Livingston County, simply because this is such a great county and everybody worked so well together. So, as you know, it's been said that a government of, by, and for the people is sustained only through the hard work and the extraordinary sacrifice of willing leaders to serve. And so I found this to be true over my 14 years as a county commissioner. I had the honor to work alongside with not only extraordinary elected officials, but a staff of truly dedicated employees who truly cared about the welfare of Livingston County and its residents. The shared purpose of elected officials and staff had guided Livingston County through some of the most difficult economic times in the Great Recession and the universal onset of COVID. I'm pleased to have been part of the county's success and in review of the 14 years, I'm reminded how much truly got tackled by a team of de dedicated people. The first state of the county address was in 2013. And this was an effort of transparency in government and public recognition and appreciation for those that work for the county and its hardworking taxpayers. I was very honored to be the first to give that address. The debt management company was, the debt management was really a dig out. Uh, we worked through some of the most difficult years for our townships, our cities, and our collaborative partners. And mind you, we still maintained our triple A bond rating and we paid down our long-term debt obligations. These were some really tough years, but the long-term planning and intense managing all paid off. We celebrated the success of the following, the jail expansion, along with creative commitments, partnering for payment as no burden to our taxpayers. We built a state-of-the-art public safety building that won national attention as a prototype 
Housing the U of M survival flight and fixed wing aircraft allowed us the financial capacity to build this first class facility. A much needed 911 facility was built to protect our county with the most updated technology and safety to serve our residents expeditiously. The new airport facility allowed for larger, more frequent aircraft and a meeting room to make a longer stay more than the occasional stopover or flyover to Livingston County. This, offer off, this also offers a unique experience that cannot be found in smaller counties. The Livingston County Economic Development Council collaborated with SPARC as a collaboration effort to cast a wider net on the glo global scene for business attraction and retention, I was to, pleased to make this introduction to in Ann Arbor through some of my real estate connections. The ever transformation of LUTs, just like Carol Sue Reader just talked about, is continually finding effective and efficient ways to serve our population. The experience of a public park and a dog park so our residents will enjoy the simple beauties of our county. I've served with four great county administrators during my tenure and one acting county administrator, but by no way was she an actor. It was Cindy, which I want to say still is Catnet, back then, before Abinas, was uh, always remained composed and confident, confident, even in the midst of our chaos. I witnessed the numerous unplanned circumstances, including three untimely deaths over the past 14 years. Their legacy of leadership and the forward thinking is a tribute that lives on in our county. And this includes Christy Cox's mother for her long-term service. I could go on and on. And I really would like to thank um, Administrator Bird for his dedication and leadership during this uncharted territory. As we have maneuvered, maneuvered and continued to maneuver through COVID and through other unplanned challenges over the years. And I wish to thank our legal counsel, Matt Norf Norford. Uh, you weren't here when I first started and uh, you didn't have gray hair when I first met you. But I do know that uh, over the last couple of years you have graved and you have also been given a lot, of, a lot of tasks from our uh, board members here to do a lot of research and we appreciate your service. I wanna thank the board of commissioners who are leaving this table tonight. I am sure this is only a political pause and your love for this county will continue on. For the continuing board members and the newly elected commissioners, I hope you will continue your leadership with the spirit of finding a shared purpose and the rewards that can be achieved from good policy over politics. In summary, I have modified the definition of success to be fitting for the last meeting of the year. Success is to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate the beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a little bit better, whether it's a garden patch or a redeemed social condition, to know that even one life has breathed easier because you have contributed, this is success. Thank you for the opportunity to serve and I wish you all much success in 2023. With that, I will move on to resolutions for consideration. Resolution 2022-12-193 is a resolution to adopt the 2023-2027 Livingston County Parks and Open Space Plan. Is um, there a motion? Resolution. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 2022-12-194 is a resolution authorizing the transfer of Handy Township water, uh, wastewater treatment plant to Handy Township. Is there a motion? So move, Halserman. Is there support? Support, Rose. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify with aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. 
Resolution 2022-12-195. This resolution is to set aside contingency funds for court union wage study implementation. Move the resolution. Is, is there support? Any further discussion on this? I know this was discussed in committee. Hearing, Commissioner Reeder. I was privy to the conversation that happened in the committee. And my thought was this, we have unions that are in the middle of negotiations at this point and will continue. And that is the place for them to decide whether or not they feel that they're not paid enough or for there to be an adjustment up or down for their salaries. I don't see we're having a union wage that's costing $117,000 to the county will grant anything further than what they can get from no negotiations through the county. Uh, and the way I kind of look at this is it ties into the bonus that we're thinking about giving. I think it has to be one or the other. If they want the wage study, great. Then they don't get the bonus. If they take the bonus, then the other happens. So uh, I just wanted to say my two cents because of course, when we're not part of the committee, we don't get a chance to say anything about it. And uh, I thought it was a good discussion by everyone, but um, I really feel that union negotiations are what this specifically goes to. Ugh, it gets worse every year. Anyway, that is my comment. Any discussion by any other commissioner? Uh, Commissioner Drug. I have the same uh, reservations about the union wage study because of the complication it might uh, throw into the negotiations. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Smith. It, 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 it was much better said than I tried to say last week, but um, it, it this is something that probably should have been anticipated long ago, but not, not right now. Commissioner Gross, did you have your hand up? Oh, I did. Yes. Thank you. Um, with respect to this resolution, um, Commissioner Drick's comments earlier uh, regarding the appropriateness of of um, making a commitment for fiscal year 2023 funding um, and the fact that union negotiations are ongoing, I have of a mind of recommending that we postpone a vote on this resolution until such time after the uh, contracts, union contracts are, are concluded. And, and I guess I'd like to make a motion for the postponement. Support. Okay, any further discussion on that amendment? Okay, all those in favor of postponing 2022-12-195, um, yes, Commissioner Gross. Oh, I'm sorry, point of order, I guess, okay. uh, on the agenda, that resolution was indicated to require a roll call vote, Correct. so would that apply to the postponement as well? No. No. Okay. No, it's up to you if you'd like to have a roll call, but you don't need a roll call on the question of whether to postpone. Okay. All those in favor of uh, postponement, please signify with aye. 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 Those against? Aye. They. Okay. I think we're going to need to have a roll count here to see. Um, yes. Um, Commissioner Zajac. No. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Drick. Yes. Commissioner Helzerman? Yes. Commissioner Reeder? No. Commissioner Griffith? Yes. Commissioner Plank? Yes. Passes. Okay, motion passes. Thank you. We'll new, now move on to 2022-12-196. It's a resolution authorizing the merger and reclassification of Swiss, SWIF and SURE Community Corrections Coordinator. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there support? Support. Okay. 
discussion. Are there any questions? Any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 2022-12197 is a resolution to adopt an incentive for non-union employees currently in the MERS defined benefit and hybrid plans to voluntarily convert to the defined contribution plan. Is there a motion? Support. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify with Aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Resolution 2022-12-198 is a resolution approving an appointment to the Livingston County Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we have a mass, don't we? I'm sorry, you're right. Are these... Yeah. Um, I will include in this next uh, resolution um, 198. 199, 200, 201, and this will be in mass. Is there a motion? Motion. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please signify with aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Aye. Motion carries. Resolution 2022-12-202 is a resolution to approve a pay stipend for election responsibilities for the county clerk. Is there a motion? So move flank support reader. Any discussion? Madam Chair, uh, we have one point of clarification um, through the discussions leading up to this meeting. I think we need to add language about budget amendment to this because it's adding costs to the clerk's office that, that don't currently show up in the budget, I would invite Administrator Bird to correct me if I'm wrong on that or give me a head nod. Or Cindy, if she's on. I think, yeah, Cindy is on Zoom. Hi, uh, if that is up to the board. You can either add a, uh, be it further resolved that the board authorizes any amendment to effectuate the above, or we can do it during the quarterly budget amendment next year. I'll make a motion um, to amend using the language that Ms. Arbanis just said. Natalie, do you have that language? I do have that. Okay, okay. very good. Make the amendments necessary to effectuate the change. I have it all saved, yes. All right, support amendment. Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, please signify with aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, we'll go back to the resolution then with the amendment and the language. I would like to note if we just added a budget amendment, we should probably do a roll call vote when we adopt the resolution. Thank you, Natalie. Yes. Okay, roll call, please, Natalie. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, we need a motion. Uh, oh, I, I, I just have no. further comment. I'll make the same comments that I made in, uh, in, at committee time uh, that uh, uh, this is an added responsibility to the clerk's jobs. I think that this is should only be a stopgap method. I think that either, you know, if, if the administrator would put it on uh, um, his agenda to bring it back to us as a, uh, that we talk about giving her more money uh, and not as a stipend, but part of her her salary, um, uh, because uh, I think a stipend is not the correct way to do it. It's okay to do it, you know, for now, but not forever. So, Commissioner Plank, um, I believe that that stipend will go year after year after year unless somebody removes it. So it will continue year after year. So it is part of the salary. It's just in a stipend like form. Right. So I just think it should be cleaner than that. That's all. Commissioner Gross. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Halzerman that if there was another uh, approach that we could have used to affect the same result. Um, I, I have to acknowledge that I had some heartburn with this resolution uh, prior to 
personnel committee last week because um, we were given some additional information after the resolution was prepared. And I was hopeful that that additional information could have been inserted into this resolution. Um, we need to face the facts that as a result of the approval of Proposition 2 in the November general election, the duties of the clerk with respect to election responsibilities is going to change significantly. And those changes have not all yet have yet been identified. Uh, but we do know that there's going to be nine days of early voting and the clerk's election group is going to need to be staffed to support that activity. Um, additionally, um, there's the opportunity or there's going to be significant expense increase for the election division in general. Um, and the interesting aspect is that because this was a change to the state constitution, it's an unfunded mandate. It's something we have to do and we have to pay. Um, so, and one other factor was that if our county clerk did not receive this stipend, we'd be in a situation that somebody underneath of her would be making more money than she is. Uh, so this stipend will correct that situation. And I wish those facts could have been included in the resolution so that what we were voting on would be perfectly clear. But I do support the, the stipend as such. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments uh, or discussion from the commissioners? Hearing none, all those, I'm sorry. Please. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Um, I think it's bad policy to single out a single elected and find that um, they've done their job well. All of our electeds do their jobs well. All of our departments do their jobs well. I don't think it's um, a surprise that there are election years with very little work and election years with a lot of work. I think it's part of the, um, job of being an elected clerk and the reward ought to be getting reelected. I uh, don't think a three sentence resolution should be enough to uh, spend the money. Uh, we're gonna get other electeds or other directors in here saying, using the same three sentences, slightly modified, and we'll have no criteria set up and no guardrails to figure out whether we ought to do it or not. Uh, overall, uh, it's also a bit unfair to some employees because uh, we had a uh, deputy that saved lives by running into a burning building, saving lives. I think he got a plaque. So I don't think this is the correct way to do it. There may be a different way. I believe she runs her office well. I uh, voted for her $23,000 increase in November of 2020 when I was serving out the last part of Donnie Parker's term. She deserved that bonus. And uh, I want to know the raise in salary then. And I think we can do this a better way if we uh, have some time to look at it. it. Probably ought to be next year. So I'm sort of agreeing with uh, Mr. Helserman, Mr. Groves. I think delay wouldn't hurt anything. There's nothing in the uh, resolution that says there's an emergency or there's some kind of urgency to get this done right away. So I'm, uh, I've got a bit of heartburn because of that. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Plank. Oh, the, the workload has increased um, with the passage of the prop, what was it, two? And so that got dumped into her lap. Nobody saw that coming when you voted for a raise for her back then. So for me, I think this is appropriate. Um, whether you change that in the future and make it part of the salary, that's up to the next board or the board after that. But I feel this is justified because of the unforeseen prop two that just 
created a massive amount of work for our clerk and clerks around the state. So I'm in support of this. Thank you. Any other comments? Commissioner Heselman. Uh, I, we have uh, another elected official in the back of the room here. And uh, just ask him how many times the state legislature has put another burden upon him and his office. It's, it's a normal, uh, it's, it's a normal thing. Um, uh, I, 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 I favor this, uh, and you know my feeling about using the word stipend. Uh, I, from what I understand, you know, Cindy, I talked to Cindy about this, and I think there's other offices that have people get stipends for things that are added to their job that's not really part of their job, but they take on a second job, and so they get a stipend for it. Uh, so it's the word stipend, and it's used in different places in our county at this particular point, but uh, <clears throat> um, yeah. Our, our state legislature is always willing to put more responsibility without sending the money along with it. That's just, just normal. And I think with the new legislature we, we have, we're apt to get three or four, five more reasons to raise the salary of, of our elected officials because of the weight that will be put upon them. So I, I, I favor this, but you know, Commissioner Drick's point is well taken. Okay. Anyone else? Everyone has spoken that needed to. Okay. Um, so with that, we have a motion with support. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, we need. Oh, roll call for this one. Okay. Commissioner Plank. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Zajac. Yes. Commissioner Drick. No. Commissioner Helzerman. Yes. Commissioner Reeder? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Griffith? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Resolution 2022-12-203 is a resolution to approve a one-time inflation assistance program for Livingston County employees. Is there a motion? Motion, Smith. Support. Support. Discussion? Any discussion? Commissioner Drack. Thank you. Uh, I would observe that I don't believe it falls under MCLA 46.11, which is the silo, which tells us what we can and cannot do. The words inflation or food cost or shelter or utilities or uh, financial stress just don't fall within that statute. And I believe Moreover, that it's mostly something that's going to occur next year, and the next board ought to have to wrestle with this, not this year's board. Uh, finally, I would observe that here's another situation where we're in the middle of negotiations with unions, and it's going to complicate that. Any other comment? Commissioner Smith. Hopefully this alleviates some concerns. Um, in that this resolution was reviewed by legal counsel and they uh, reviewed it for uh, propriety and uh, that uh, contingency of the uh, ongoing uh, union negotiations. Um, I think this will be a, uh, while it could it could generate some confusion, I'll, I'll grant you that. I, I think this would, would actually show commitment on the part of the county to uh, to the, to the workers that are looking at their their current union negotiations, uh, and and send a strong signal that that uh, not only are are they appreciated, but that there is an intent by the county to continue to support them uh, in their um, financially and to take into consideration the uh, financial impact of the world around them. So ho hopefully that alleviates some concerns. Thank you. Any other discussion, comments? Yes, sir. Uh, it's always easy to give out money. Um, uh, we're always popular when we give out money. 
Um, it does not necessarily mean that it's the wise thing to do. Uh, and I, 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 I favor this. I think that um, there, there are reasons to do it, um, especially under these financial uh, situations. Um, but um, I just remind my colleagues that it's always easy, easy for us to give money away. Uh, we just need to be careful that we don't get too good at giving money away. Any other comments from any commissioners that haven't had a chance to talk? Carol? Okay. I'm going to reiterate what I said earlier. Um, I think it does interfere with union negotiations. I would make a motion for it to be adjourned until such time as the union negotiations are completed, which could be only a matter of a couple of weeks. So I don't see any urgency to passing this at this time. I support the amendment. Any discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, those in favor of the amendment of postponement, pardon me. I just want to be clear, this is a motion to postpone, not an amendment. So we're just setting it to a date until such time as union negotiations are completed, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, we do have a motion with support. All those, I guess this is a roll call. Um, so we're going to have the amendment vote first. I'm going to do a roll call on that. We'll come back to the amendment and do a roll call there, please. On the postponement. Yes, on the postponement. Okay. Voting on the po po postponement. Commissioner Plank? No. Commissioner Gross? Yes. Commissioner Zajac? No. Commissioner Drick? Yes. Commissioner Halzerman? Yes. Commissioner Reeder? Yes. Commissioner Smith? No. Commissioner Griffith? No. There are four no's and four yeses. Commissioner Gross. Motion to postpone has failed, and we will uh, next be voting on the resolution as it stands. I'd like to take this opportunity to point out to my colleagues that this is an unbudgeted item that's going to cost us a, a significant amount of money whenever it's uh, uh, delivered. Um, I I have heartburn with that. That's all I have to say. And Thank you. Just a point of clarification. I think this is just authorizing that um, that negotiation tool. It's not, or at least as for the uh, unions, which is what I'm hearing is a big concern. Um, so at least as the unions, ultimately the board will have to vote on whether or not to adopt a union agreement. As to the non-union, of course, yes, it's an increase. So I just want to add that two cents. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, let me uh, please clarify your point here. You're saying that this does not apply to unions unless they accept it. Is that is 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 that what you're saying? And you anticipate they might not accept it? Oh well, it's not, Madam Chair. For me, sorry. Um, it's in my understanding is we don't have any set compensation for the unions until there's a ratified agreement. So um, though they may accept it, uh, the board in the future. Uh, in three days, may decide uh, whether or not to uh, enter into an agreement that includes this item or perhaps a, a different item, lower or higher, um, with the unions. That, that was my only point. You're saying that, in your opinion, this does not bind future board to give it to the union. Is that what, not, what your understanding is? My opinion would be no. I mean, any future board can even change any of the decisions we've made tonight. So I would say that even though we make a decision on this, Certainly, a future board could uh, take uh, take back perhaps the uh, amount from non unions as well. Um, that would be, I think, difficult, but uh, <laughs> it's up to you guys. Um, but but as to the unions, there's no there's no there's no I don't think binding nature. And, and Mr. Norford hasn't popped on to say zip it, so I think he doesn't disagree. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Gross. Um, I'm. 
I'm a little bit confused on this. The be it further resolved at the bottom of page 37 says that this will be a one-time bonus to be paid on or before February 28th of 2023. There's no mention about contingent upon conclusion of union negotiations. This sounds to me like we're making a payment to cut checks by the end of February. It, it's not a maybe thing. This is definite. Unless I'm grossly mistaken. Commissioner Smith, did you have your hand up? Yeah, just uh, I, I think I think this is getting a little overcomplicated. Yes, it does uh, certainly say that uh, to be paid in a one time check uh, on or before February 28th. Uh, but I th I thought Commissioner Sajak and clarify, please clarify me if I'm wrong was saying that the union contract may or may not be affected by this and such contract would have to come back to the board for ratification. That's my opinion and understanding, but um, Mr. Nordford and, and Jennifer are also now on video to perhaps correct me. Matt, do you have anything you'd like to weigh in or Jennifer for clarity? I was gonna say have Jennifer go first since she was working on the premise of this, then I can weigh in if needed. Okay, thank you. Jennifer, welcome. Hi there. <clears throat> so to answer the question um, that Commissioner Gross raised, that there the provision is on page two of the resolution in a be it further resolved under um, B2 that refers to um, uh, the, nece the necessity of a bargained for agreement. Um, we are, as you, as we discussed, uh, we're presently in bargaining. Um, the unions that we've met with are aware of this. Um, uh, there is a deadline built into this resolution whereby agreements with them would need to be reached by February 15th, 2023. And so they're aware of, those, of that deadline. Uh, I agree with Commissioner Zajac as well that any agreements that we get will have to come back to the board for specific ratification. And so I, I, I hope that addresses um, your concern, Commissioner Gross and any other commissioners, that those would be separate agreements um, that gain the board's approval as well in the future. Um, Ms. Palmbush, I, I guess I guess my concern is that I, I, I don't want to get into any details of contract negotiations in any way, shape or manner, but I I am just very hopeful, but maybe I'm pessimistic. I don't know um, if that if union negotiations will, in fact, be done by February 15th. It's a concern I have. Yeah, I, and I I understand. I like I said, the unions are um, are aware now of this deadline. Is is there an incentive? No, I I can't ask that question. I still have a concern. Thank you, Commissioner Hazelman. Did you have a question? It's my understanding that this was this is a you know it may, it may be some something that we just talk in closed session, but um, I think that the unions have have a possibility of, of losing this, we can take this away from them if they're not bargaining in good faith, you know, so. Anyone else want to weigh in or ask a question? question? Commissioner, yes. Commissioner Smith, right on page 37, right above the line that Commissioner Gross was talking about, it says uh, county commissioners and judges are not eligible. Okay. Uh, by judges, did you also mean the uh, multiple front of the court referees, the juvenile court referee, and the magistrate? Because a lot of people would think they wear black robes and they're judges. Yeah, it might. Uh, yeah, I can tell you my intention was the um, elected judges okay. and the county commissioners. And if elected judges and elected county commissioners are out, what about our six electeds 
that populate the directorships? Are they out also? No, Register they, deeds, treasurer. They are not out. They're in. They're in. They are part of the the uh, county employment base. Commissioner Direct, did you have any more clarity questions or are you set? Is the, can I inquire what your reasoning would be for the some in, some out? Other than having to draw a line somewhere, no. Somebody had it. Okay. <laughs> any further questions on this resolution? I think everyone's had a chance to weigh in. Yes, Administrator Bird. I think this is understood, but I just wanted to, to make it clear on the uh, question of this being unbudgeted. Um, that's true, it's not budgeted. It's not coming out of 2023 revenues. This will be coming out of our fund balance, which is uh, healthy right now and could absorb this. I think we're at around 37 million for our general fund balance, which is well above our minimum that we like to keep in there. So um, it, he's correct. It's not budgeted, but it's also not coming out of what the revenues that built next year's budget. So I just want to make sure the board understands that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Drake. About how much do you think it'll cost? About $1.6 million. $1.6. Cindy, is that the figure that we? Yes, that is correct. Our, that's our max exposure or is that the range or that if this passed as is that's that's the cost that's what that's what will be paid out 1.6 is the cost that's, that's the maximum um, uh, assuming every fte that is authorized got paid we do know that there will be some vacant ftes thank you okay does that round out all the questions i guess we are ready for a roll call vote natalie commissioner plank <laughs> Commissioner Gross? No. Commissioner Zajac? Yes. Commissioner Drick? No. Commissioner Helzerman? Yes. Commissioner Reeder? No. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Griffith? Yes. You have five yeses and three noes. Motion carries. Okay, our last resolution this evening is 2022-12-204, if I've got the record straight, um, Natalie, for that. Uh, and this will be a roll call, but we'll continue with a resolution authorizing negotiations, contracts, and agreements to construct, maintain, serve, and apply for grants for Livingston County Public Safety, Educational, Municipal, open access middle mile fiber optic trunk line systems. Move the resolution. Support. Okay, discussion. Director Toby. Yes, uh, good evening commissioners. Again, uh, this is pretty much the same thing that we reported on at the last full board of commissioners meeting uh, with per uh, permission from the general government chair earlier in the month of December, and we reported during the FAM committee meeting, and then on to a full report during the uh, full board meeting uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we are prepared to give a report and give a presentation, but the presentation is pretty much verbatim uh, what we went through two weeks ago. Uh, with us tonight, I would like to take a moment and introduce uh, some of the people that have assisted uh, with going forth and exploring this possibility as we were charted to uh, from the Board of Commissioners here. Uh, to my left, I have our infrastructure manager, Tim Miles. Uh, behind me, I have Sophia Frenny, our project coordinator. And we also have Ms. Heather Callahan from Callahan Consulting, who assisted with the RFP, the RFP scoring. Uh, she is an expert in IT procurement, and she's also an attorney. So she kept us on point, as do all good attorneys. Uh, joining us remotely, we have uh, Mr. Bob Stovall, who is the Vice President of Fiber Operations from Merit Networks, our partner in exploring this process. We also have Mr. Dave Larson, who has been a prime partner uh, throughout this process uh, with LESA. They continue to uh, want to be a partner with Livingston County. 
Uh, we also have from Merritt, Mr. David Dennis, who he is my counterpart uh, at Merritt, the Chief Information Officer. Joining us from the recommended partners here, we have Mr. Jeff Paris and Ms. Amanda Cedric from EX Squared. And I think that rounds out the whole team here. Partners, could you talk about how they are partners? Uh, they are a recommended partner as part of the report. So they bid and uh, submitted proposals for their request for proposals. And they are the recommended awardee based on scoring and pricing in the RFP, sir. Okay. Okay. I, I don't understand the term partner. And also, I felt to uh, recognize Mr. Sandin Latiri of the Livingston County GIS team, who has been a huge asset in the mapping of this project here. So with that, I'd, I'd just like to get the board's uh, thoughts. Would you like us to proceed with the presentation that we presented last week? Because it's pretty much the same thing. Um, it's up to, to you all. Is there any feeling of the commissioners here? Do you need that again? Um, okay. Let me just uh, get a clarification on what's happening uh, tonight. Uh, it, we are we are asking you're asking us to approve the uh, phase one and two bids. Is that said succinctly? Is that uh, uh, what the resolution, in fact, the guts of it is? Yes, there are a number of items there. Uh, basically, we are asking for permission from the board to proceed and enter into contract negotiations with the uh, recommended uh, proposal bidder, if you will, uh, which is EX squared for phases one and two. Uh, they were the best scoring and best value for the county. Uh, we are also asking for permission to proceed with negotiations with the school, local school districts and municipalities uh, on the maintenance of the system. We're also uh, asking for permission to proceed with uh, exploring public-private grant partners and uh, for the system and apply for other grants like the Robin Grant or the Bead Grants as they are available to the project. Okay, so there, so, okay, so, um, okay, so it's broader than, okay, that's good. That's, I just want to see what, you know, the overall part of the discussion, um, and I'll have further questions later, so. And, and commissioners, this is pretty much the exact same package that I had left for all of you at the last board meeting. Um, I don't know if any of you were able to take that with you, but we did try to provide everything we possibly could for you, as we always try to do from the IT department here. Very good. Any questions uh, for Director Toby? Yes, Commissioner Gross. Um, Chris, I uh, am really pleased that you given us all this information in, that you did previously. Um, one difficulty that I have had is that uh, there's an awful lot of data here. There's a number of, of pages scattered through that have cost information, uh, you know, uh, miles of wiring or cable, if you will, and, and connectors and all the rest of that stuff. Would it, would it be possible for you to give us a one page summary of, of the financial impact in terms of what we're committing to pay for engineering design all the various elements uh, then materials um so that we don't have to go thumbing through sure pages of data um if you would flip to we have it broken out i want to make sure we have the table here for you um so near the end of the packet, the project was bid as four separate loops uh, with the aspect of any one or all four of the loops being could be started or uh, not started, depending on the board's leisure. Uh, near the back of the package, there is a series of tables. And if I may approach the uh, board. Certainly. What's the 
what's the what the front page of that? Yes, it's helpful. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions uh, further for Director Toby? So, Commissioners, what we did was we took the proposal here as uh, proposed by the recommended uh, firm. And we've broken that out and laid out the route design, if there are any building drop designs, permitting costs, building construction drops, aerial construction, type of construction, and then materials. Um, it can go a lot deeper than that, Commissioner Gross. We have not broken it down into an itemized uh, just to spare the board the, the itemized detail because there are a lot of components in this whole project. Any further questions needed for clarity? Okay. Comment. Commissioner I'm finding, uh With my speed reading ability that I have seen this before and I retract my comment earlier in the day when it seemed like a bit of a surprise and I didn't want to be accused of the Pelosi thing. Oh. Well, thank you. I would but... never want to surprise the board. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, we do have a motion with support and this will be a roll call, Natalie. We're, oh, I'm sorry, just a moment. Vote on the resolution at this point. Did you have any further questions for? Uh, yes. Okay, go right ahead. Yeah, I, okay. Um, like I said, I'm, uh, uh, I am not ready to to vote on this yet. I think that uh, a lot of times when we have these things come before us, we have uh, we have uh, the different bidders and what they bid and what the, was the difference between the the bidding. And I don't know. I've I have not seen that yet. Uh, and so, uh, especially on uh, phase two, I uh, I think that we have a uh, a bidder. I think that actually, from my converse, limited conversation with Chris, that they came in third place, but they uh, they were the low bidder. First of all, uh, they had a bid that that would, um, in addition to giving open access, uh, uh, open access lines as uh, our ARPA request said only open access, they would also, if I understand, like I said, I've not, uh, I, I've not had the deep conversations with Chris on this, that they would also have, uh, at the same time, put in uh, a a line that would give uh, uh, access, uh, last mile access to the people at least that were along this line, uh, and uh, that they. Uh, it's my understanding that this company uh, uh, will be using. Uh, the open access, uh, they will keep it open. I think, I think most of the partners, at least the partners that I've heard, uh, give presentations. Is my understanding that they wanted a uh, a uh, a period of time where they had only access to a certain area, uh, and so there'd be limited access for three to five years, whatever, whatever the time frame was. And so uh, it seems to me, you know, that that uh, that this board should consider, uh, you know, have paperwork in front of us to consider 
if that is whether we want to build only an open access one or at the same time uh, for less money have a company that we partner with that is doing the last mile uh, connections at the same time. Um, and uh, to me, uh, I don't have the information in front of me right now. I was not expecting that this would be uh, uh, brought up today. So I didn't uh, have my ducks in a row. I understand uh, that, uh, I understand the timeliness of this. And I understand that that the commissioner uh, Zajac as, uh, as, as well as our team, uh, our IT team has put a lot of work into this. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be nice uh, from Mitch's standpoint that this be buttoned up uh, and completed uh, while he's on, uh, on the board. Um, but I, uh, um, I, you know, in my mind, I think we should break these down uh, uh, and and do phase one bid, accept that, do phase two bid, accept that. Because I, in my mind, the, in my mind, I'm fully in favor of a phase one that as it is presented. Phase two, I would recommend that we have a different partner, uh, if that's the term we're using, uh, to complete this project. And I think we would get a better, a better uh, acceptance from the community because there would be at least some people that are getting the last mile uh, connection uh, from that. And, and I think, I think it's important also that we have uh, our ducks in a row for the Robin grants. You know, I, I understand, you know, so, you know, the, we're dealing with a lot of things and most of the things I'm favorable to, but there's, you know, it seems to me that we need to have at least some last mile uh, and, um, uh, I'm favorable of, of, you know, phase one is for the county, basically. Phase two uh, is for Unadilla, and Unadilla, uh, at this point, I represent Unadilla. Uh, and phase two brings um, uh, fiber uh, to their police and fire in Unadilla, you know, and uh, and so I can't vote against that, but I think that the provider for phase two should be changed. That's the only thing here that I would change in, in this from the limited amount of information that I have. So I don't know how to go about uh, making that motion because you don't have the information and I don't have the information to give to you uh, to give a fair, uh, 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 detailed access as to why to, to ask for a different provider for phase two. So, um, I don't know if there's any other discussion on that. Uh, uh, if, if there isn't, I would, I, I would make a, a motion to, uh, consider uh, another bidder for phase two. We've got two other commissioners and also Director Toby. Director Toby, do you want to go first and then uh, Commissioner Plank yeah. and Commissioner um, Zajac? So, commissioners, in the report on page 11, page 10 and 11 of the report here, we lay out the arduous scoring that was done as part of this RFP proposal. 
Um, the bidders that bid successfully or uh, submitted proposals for this project uh, were all scored. Um, we went through an arduous process with uh, Mr. Stovall and the merit team. And we had our trusted advisor, Ms. Callahan, overseeing the bidding process. The scoring was done as a matter of uh, a number of different independent parties, all scoring it independently. And these scores that you see lay out, laid out here are how each of the firms scored based on the criteria. And it was very arduous criteria. Uh, that was laid out here. Um, the board had always indicated that we did not want to be a retail provider on this, so we did not include anything about that retail service. We were going out for a trunk line system as part of the RFP. It was intended to be an open access system so that when the time was right, other partners could get onto the system. That is kind of what we've gone through the entire process on. Um, so we have the scoring that is all summarized for you on pages 10 and pages 11 here. And then in addition to that, um, on the financials table section, which we were just in a moment ago, there is a table there listing out the costs and the pricing for the various phases here. And so we've tried to do this as independently as we possibly could using good scoring to make sure that we have a good and qualified uh, proposal here with responsible bidders. Thank you, Director Toby. Commissioner Plank. Yeah, I, actually, I was gonna, you stole my thunder. And on page nine, it actually is a breakdown of the results of those evaluations. Sort of gives you a breakdown of what, how well they scored and, and what they didn't score well on. So if you're looking at page nine, it's the header is um, evaluation results. And it has a total of one, two, three, four, uh, five, um, with a very um, brief description of how they scored or how they did, you know, what were the concerns uh, of the scores that, that uh, were evaluated. So you actually have that in a nice breakdown. Thank you very much for providing that. Um, so Commissioner Hausman, I think that might help you um, when you're with what you were just discussing and what you needed. I think that might help. Page nine of this this one mm -hmm. yeah, the, yeah. It says report yeah Mr. Zajac yeah thank you Madam Chair I just want to point out also on pages 10 and 11 uh, there is a summary of the score um, out of 100 the recommended partner scored a 92.5 um, and the other two scored a 56.9 and a 75.5 and, and I believe the one that is proposed um, the uh, kind of uh, different phase two approach is the one that scored 56.9. And, and based on the funding amounts, you know, we are not recommending moving forward with phases three or four without funding on those and without strict board approval on that. In addition to that, uh, just for clarification purposes, phase two does have significant value to the county and to the educational partners and the public safety partners as it does create resiliency in the system, allowing bi-directional traffic to go either way as part of a loop design. And of the design that is laid out, uh, that gives us, I want to say, potentially up to four different pathways that traffic could travel along the cable system. And, and it also, Madam Chair, if I may, it also, if I'm not mistaken, Director Toby enables bullet point number two, um, for the maintenance and partnership of the local smaller units, um, which effectively allows us to have the, the no cost to the county. If those are done successfully, if we enter successful agreements, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but with the schools and with the other municipalities, that will cover our maintenance and depreciation costs if done correctly. Yes, that is correct, sir. And that is the overall goal of the system. Under phase two. Yes.
Commissioner Hilselman. On page 12, if, if I'm reading this correctly, okay, uh, all, all of these um, bidders, all three bidders would, uh, would give the same uh, value of, uh, of the line and, and of the, uh, of the um, uh, everything that you described, all three bidders here would give, you know, the same service, the same open access and that sort of thing. I, I just want to point out on uh, page 12, that um, that uh, the one that got the bid, he they, they were the highest the highest score, but they also had the highest price, uh, twenty four million. Uh, that would be for the total correct? project, sir. That is the total all four phases. Okay. Uh, that is, is there the is there something that is there a uh, that breaks it down to just phase one and two. Uh, yeah. Right. Oh, right here. So if you if you look okay, there, under the okay. table. Okay, so uh, on phase two, uh, phase two, um, uh, the, you know, uh, surf uh, surf internet is 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 two million less than uh, than the other one. Is there a uh, um, and so is there? Do you think that the scoring uh, indicates the end result of our uh, uh, of the service that we'd receive. So what I would say to that, sir, is that the RFP uh, scoring criteria was a very arduous scoring system. We put forth a lot of effort into developing that. Um, we went into this not having any preferences, no bias whatsoever to any of the different parties. Um, it was open to any company that wanted to provide that. The scoring reflects the responses to the RFP questions as part of the total RFP process. So the quality of the materials submitted in the RFP and the questions that were asked uh, the vendor needed to be responsive to those questions, which are questions that would reflect upon our build, uh, quality of as-built construction and construction documents, permitting. There's a, a whole criteria that we have laid out there. Um, and so we balanced the scoring with the pricing to find the best qualified bidder for or a proposal for the county. And if I may ask uh, Ms. Ms. Callahan to talk a little bit to uh, the process that we developed here. Yeah, I, I have no question about the process. I, okay. It, it, may, it may help other people. I, and I have no question that it was done, you know, equally and, and fairly and, and whatever. I, I don't, you know, that's not. Okay. That I just is, want to make sure that you. That understand. is not. I'm, I'm not questioning the process or the integrity of the people doing the process or, or, or the scoring. I'm just saying that the, 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 uh, uh, you know, the, that may not reflect upon the end product. That's all I'm saying. That's, you know, it, uh, uh, and uh, could you talk a little bit about the positives and negatives of having uh, having a partner that does this that is also going to be a partner uh, in uh, uh, we will have a partner already uh, in this uh, and we will have at least one person that we have lined up 
when we do this as as a partner and a user, uh, it, it seems to me that that's an advantage to the county to go into this, uh, uh, at least the phase two part of it, which is uh, it, which is meant to also reach out to other people in the county. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. The whole system is designed to be an open access model, phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four, because we want to invite partners to come to Livingston County to help utilize the trunk line system that we've laid out here to get further out into our communities as time and everything sees fit. As far as, you know, one leg being more faster than the other, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, you know, we, we set forth on the RFP excluding that service to the home because of the direction that we'd had from the board. Now, the system that we've designed will help facilitate that. And there are aspects of the build that are incorporated into the RFP that will help to facilitate that. And so we're helping to facilitate that public-private partnership. And part of the resolution does ask for permission to proceed with searching out and negotiating with private partners on the development of public-private partners that will ultimately be able to work with Livingston County and LESA to apply for federal state grant opportunities like Robin and Bead funds for middle mile or last mile service. So we're not ruling anyone out for that. Um, we're asking for permission from the board to proceed with those conversations and searching out those partners that can help us facilitate that next step. We wouldn't want to put the cart before the horse. Uh, that's why we excluded that from it. You, you've already uh, reached out to potential partners or potential, potential partners have reached out to you. Can you talk about that uh, phase? Uh, of, of, of this. So we would like to reach out and have further conversations. We are currently under a non-disclosure agreement with one partner and we are searching out other partners that could be potential partners, but we have no material documents or anything of that. Nothing of fact, just okay. things that are contained under a non-disclosure agreement with Livingston County from one partner. But I have reached out to the partner you're referring to um, that is listed here on this bid tabulation and you know requested an opportunity to sit down at the table and talk with them as well. Okay. But what you have here at the dais tonight is not you know saying that we are forming a public private partnership with anyone we're asking for the ability to proceed with negotiations and forming contracts to go into those private partners. Have you, have you talked with uh, uh, this this particular uh, company? And I don't know if I can say it uh, out loud at this point uh, about uh, about a, uh, a partnership. You know, uh, at this point, do you are you are you at all? The first base on that. Um, I, I would say that, you know, we've had really good conversations with the partner that you're referring to. I think that there's a lot of opportunity there for us to figure something out. And we have to sit down pretty quick here. The Robin Grant funding timeline opens on January 9th. And we want to have a seat at the table. What we've delivered to the board is pretty much a shovel-ready project in four phases here, uh, with phases one and two being ready to go right now with the money that the board awarded through the uh, uh, process of the ARPOT dollars. Uh, we are in a prime seat, I believe, to go after and be very competitive for the Robin Grants, which is an additional $238 million from the state. But we've got to be quick on the spot. And that's why this is all here before you today. Um, mm. Just to be clear, this is not a, a Chris Toby proposal. This is a, a, a course of action that the board has requested and that we've mm. gone forth very diligently and sought out. So we are continuing to aggressively uh, seek out these opportunities and take advantage of everything we possibly can for you and for our citizens. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion uh, at this point that for phase two, 
uh, we take the low bidder uh, for $5,564,372.96. Uh, that we change this proposal uh, uh, in that uh, that provider, uh, with the understanding that provider will be a um, uh, a partner uh, that we will be able to go into Robin with at least one partner, uh, and uh, this this project is also at the same time uh, putting in not only middle mile but last mile. They'll be able to provide two services for a smaller price than uh, it would be for just one service. That's my motion. Is there support for the motion? Is there support for the motion? Hearing none, the amendment fails. All right, I think we're time now for a roll call. Nadley? I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Commissioner Dreck. Thank you, it'll be quick. I understand that there are various grants. Uh, the paperwork seems to say um, a partnership or a grant, something from E-rate. Do we have a deadline? to do E-rate? The E-rate process is already in motion right now. Um, we are working with our partners at LESA and Triple R Consulting. Um, we brought that proposal to you earlier in the year. I wanna say it was in August or September to move forward with that proposal. And so- That deadline is met? Yes, okay. yes. Uh, the documents talk about a coronavirus and Robin. Is that two separate or is that the same thing? Uh, the Robin funding is part of the Corona, uh, the uh, American Recovery Plan Act. Yeah, I got that right. Uh, capital projects funding, which was doled out by the uh, federal government. And it is an additional funding mechanism for funding last mile and middle mile systems. And so are we good with the deadline? We are going to work our tails off to get there. Now, you say that it opens on the 9th, and that'd be the best time. What's the last part? So it's a, uh, I can't recall exactly if it's a 45 or a 60-day time period. It's a very short window. And so we have to move right into the pipeline on this. A lot of what we have here, including the maps that we've spent time working on, the broadband survey data that we set forth and, re and received last year in January, all these different components were kind of like an assembly line with all the components lined up, ready to move once the board decides the direction that they wanna go in. And is there a deadline for the Infrastructure and Investment Act? Uh, those I believe come in under the bead grants and those are supposed to become available in 2024. And that could help facilitate even further last mile connections there. And then there's something talked about middle mile grants, or is that the bead? Uh, the bead and the Robin grants are incorporated in the middle mile. Okay. So we're we've got we've got a great opportunity if we act fast to get in the first at January 9th. Yeah, we're we're probably not going to hit that January 9th deadline, but as long as we make it in in that that period. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, but we have we have a lot of work to do. Um, so, you know, this is not the end of something, but this is the beginning of something here. And we will work diligently as we always do for all of you and your constituents. That's all. Thank you. Commissioner Gross. Um, Director Toby, I'm under the impression that if we approve this resolution as it's presented, that gives you absolutely everything you need to proceed with trying to get a Robin or a B grant. Is that accurate? I, I will say yes to that question, although I will say that the state and the feds are still trying to figure things out a little bit. We were on a uh, webinar with the state's uh, high-speed internet office, uh, not this past Friday, but the previous Friday, and uh, they're still they don't have everything fully dialed in. So there's a chance that I could have to come back to the board again for some of this. Um, but it's based on all the knowledge that we have to this point, 
everything in this resolution and in this packet is everything that we need. Thank you. Any other questions uh, from? Thank you, Director Toby and everyone who was involved. And we do realize this was a lot of work. <laughs> this, this took more than a village. <laughs> it looks like and we appreciate that. So at this point, I'll ask for a roll call, please, Natalie. Commissioner Plank. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Zajac. Yes. Commissioner Drick. Yes. Commissioner Helderman. Yes. Commissioner Reeder. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Griffith. Yes. Passes. Thank you very much, commissioners. We appreciate this. We'll yeah. look forward to reporting back to you quarterly on this uh, and commissioners elect. All right, we'll move now on to accounts payable. We have payables dated December 3rd through December 16th, 2020. Motion. Support. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Call to the public. This is our final call to the public. We'll start in the room and... Um, Natalie, is there anyone in the room that wishes to address the board this evening? Patrick Lona from Cahokta Township. Welcome, Patrick. Yes, please. And if you could speak into the microphone so we can hear you. Thank you. Um, my name is Patrick Long, L-O-N-G. <clears throat> um, I've been in Cahokta Township ever since we moved out here um, about 30 years ago. Um, I'm very concerned because I have no internet for pretty much whatsoever. I appreciate this presentation. I don't know what it's going to do for me. I'm probably the last mile. My kids, we can't even watch stream TV at all. I can't even use my cell phone almost at, at, at my house. I just implore you, if we could somehow get this going. I just, I'm sorry, I'm emotional about this because I've been dealing with this for years. Um, guy down the street, he couldn't even sell his house because there was no internet. Can you believe that? My housing values are going down because there is no internet in my house. It is, internet is not a luxury anymore. It is a, it's a utility. And I can't believe there are countries, Antarctica has better internet than I do. And it's just, it's ridiculous to me. And I just, I know that there is funds available. And I've heard more funds, and this is the most positive I had lately is listening to this presentation. I don't know if it's going to meet me. I'm probably the last of the last mile. But I just implore you, I, this is something we need to work on fast. And I appreciate Commissioner Drick. I, I love to be, let's get it going. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Lyon. All right. Natalie, anyone else? Nathan Bird of Heartland Township. This is a familiar face. <laughs> so all the people who said nice things about you earlier don't report to you so i thought you should probably hear from somebody who does report to you um just to say more nice things about the board i uh as, as you know tonight and really every monday night at six o'clock you're dealing with really difficult complex issues and you all handle it very very well so i just wanted to thank you for that um we hear the phrase a lot that the wheels of government turn slowly and they do and usually there's a decent reason for that um and sometimes we get sort of trapped into thinking that nothing's happening. But if you look back over the last couple of years, an awful lot of good things have happened, really good things. And that's because of the work you do. So Commissioner Plank, uh, Commissioner Reeder, Commissioner Zajac, and Commissioner Griffith, uh, we will miss you very much. Uh, we're excited to welcome new commissioners next week, but we hope that you'll keep in touch with us. And Commissioner Griffith, you uh, are one of the few left that hired me a couple of years ago. So thank you for that. And it was, um, you were chair at that time. Yeah. I'll be glad to give you six minutes if you'd like. <laughs> Don't stop now. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to add my voice to everyone expressing their appreciation and uh, hope you all have a great rest of the year and a happy new year and look forward to keeping in touch with all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jason, what's the game day? Well, that could be a concern. So if we win Saturday, we being Ohio State, we will be playing in a couple Monday nights. So I might be virtual for that. <laughs> no, I'll be here. But uh, yes, uh, January 9th, I think, is the... But hopefully it's Ohio State, Michigan. That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. And Happy New Year to you and your family. Natalie, is there anyone else? I have no more. Okay. Um, due to the recent snowstorm we had, I have no internet whatsoever. It was knocked out. There was a equipment failure that we, the minimal that we get, we get like a four megabytes per second. 
uh, through, it's called Hidden Lakes Wireless. It's completely out for at least three weeks. So just wanted to throw that in. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Zajac, I'll um, allow you to have a call to the public, your final you. call to yeah, the public. Final call to the public. I appreciate that, Madam Chair. And, and I just want to say I'm uh, profoundly grateful for this opportunity to have served in this capacity. Um, you know, being being voted into your your high school uh, mock trial is certainly one thing, but this is something totally different. Um, when you promise uh, Coke in the lunchroom, um, it's a little bit different promise when you talk about the things you'll do once you get here. Coca Cola in the in the lunchroom, yes. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, two things that were very eye-opening to me. First um, is the skill and the composure and the expertise um, and, and really just the overall top-notch nature of the county uh, administration, the departments, the employees, um, everyone that, that makes the wheels, though they may turn slow, makes them turn. Um, and second, the opportunity to serve um, and what that has meant to me has been a very important aspect of, of my life and my future. And, and Winston Churchill has a good quote. Um, he says that now this is not the end, it's not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. And so I'm committing to my uh, colleagues and to my constituents for the next uh, four days and, and as a uh, co-constituent thereafter that I will uh, continue to serve. Um, you know, we must accept at times that these um, decisions we have to make, the things that we have to do, um, sometimes they're hard. And whether you're on the board or whether you're working with a county employee or whether you're just uh, yeah, an ordinary member of the public, so to speak, um, we oftentimes face these challenges. And, and I would say that we've done well with what we have where we are, to, to quote uh, a biblical reference. Uh, to my colleagues who will continue to serve on the board and those who will serve in, in any other capacities in the community, I want to thank you for your tutelage, for your uh, membership, for your uh, mentorship, for your challenging uh, questions at times, and also for your encouragement. Uh, to those who come, whether it's the new board members or it's the high school student in Mr. Simon's uh, social studies class, or it's the first, second, and third grader who might watch this meeting someday. I want to thank you for your willingness to serve, uh, to do the work, and to do things even when uh, facing adversity. There's many influential leaders that have profound, poignant um, one-liners, so to speak. Um, things like when the going gets tough, the tough get going. But for me, I will uh, oftentimes turn to Yoda and, and his saying that do or do not, there is no try. So I would just encourage everyone um, and thank everyone that even though things are difficult, even though you have adversity, uh, whatever capacity it is that you're serving, uh, thank you for doing that. And uh, my profound gratitude to those who continue to serve. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right, we, I am now going to close the call to the public yeah. in this room, and, but I'm now gonna go to Zoom. <laughs> yes, yeah. I see Adam. Commissioners, thank you for giving me a chance to talk. And I'd like to thank Commissioner Reeder and Judge Reeder for mentioning Let's Transportation. We were called upon um, on Friday night for a warming station for the firefighters. And this is my chance to stand up for my employees. We were closed and I put out a call to my employees and I was overwhelmed of how many answered to that call. I took the first two because I needed two to go on the scene, but I just want um, everyone here to know that I'm extremely proud of West Transportation employees. They stepped up to the plate. I got called by 20 employees willing to go out and support that night. So um, thank you commissioners for always supporting West Transportation. Um, and I, I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. That's really impressive. Are there, is there anyone else on Zoom that wishes to address the board this evening? Well, Commissioner Griffith, um, as host, I'm not able to raise my hand, but I would like to say a word. Mm -hmm. So I'd also thank you very much. So I'd also like to thank the uh, four commissioners that are leaving. It's been great working with all of you, Brenda. So I really appreciate all of your uh, everything that you've done for county employees. I think you've done a great job, and I, you know, I'm sad to see you go. You know, I think you've really grown as a commissioner. It's, it's been great to see that, Commissioner Reeder. I, you know, I didn't get to work with you a whole lot. I wish I had an opportunity to work with you more. 
and Commissioner Zajac, I wish I met you 20 years ago when I had more energy and I had a younger mind uh, to keep up with you <laughs> because you just amaze me. And Commissioner Griffith, I can't say enough good things about you, your class, your humor, your professionalism. It's been great working with you. Thank you, Thank you Cindy. Is there anyone else that would like to say something nice about us? <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, I, yes. I, I just got a little word when she said, I wish I had met Mitch 20 years ago. That's all. I yeah, that was pretty impressive. Wow. Is, is your wife on the Zoom there, Mitch? I don't Babysitter? know. Babysitter? <laughs> all right. Okay. Before this really deteriorates, or we can get creative. Um, I'm going to close the call to the public, and it's our last call to the public for 2022. And here it comes. This is the adjournment, the last meeting for 2022. I Who see. would so, like to make that motion? I move, move to adjourn. And support. And all those in favor. Aye. 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 And happy new year to everyone. And thank you for making this county great. Okay. Nice job, Carol. Thank you.